Well, thank you so much. And thank you for that kind introduction as well. Hope you can all hear me, which is great. And let me just prepare to share my screen here. Okay, that's all good to go. And I'll start off. Is this good? Are we good to go? Hope, yes, it's perfect. Hope you can see it all. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so my background, I'm a dental technician. I'm a denturist. I'm also a, an, an instructor or an educator in denturism. And so again, I was introduced to the InnoBytes, I guess, earlier in the year. And I did participate in one of the presentations by Frederick as well. And I thought it was very interesting. And anyways, I decided to purchase one. So a little bit background on myself. I am from Germany originally. I came to Canada in 1986 at age 20. So I'm a dental technician. I trained at Vancouver Community College, where I also did my dentures training in 2002. Um, I am now an Ivo Klar BPS Dentures instructor, and I had the honor and privilege to, to train with Dr. Jiro Abe in Japan four times, and I've become a clinical and technical instructor in lower suction dentures. And I have a denture clinic in Mission BC. Thank you all for joining this evening. I'm tired. I'm sure most of you also have been busy working hard. I think we're all experiencing the pre-Christmas rush right now. So it's definitely that time of year as well. So two things I just want to share with you. Um, I'm not being paid to do this presentation. So I don't receive financial compensation from Cube Innovations. And also I want to say I'm not presenting a scientific study or scientific paper, paper right now here. What I want to do, I just want to share you some of the things that I have experienced using the Innobite in my denture clinic uh, since April this year. And... It takes a little bit of time to integrate something new. I'm sure all you can relate into your daily processes as well, but I've, I really enjoy using the InnoBite because it gives me something that is unique and different. So yes, if you have some questions, of course, look at your Q&A in the bottom. Uh, Marianne will deal with any questions or she'll post them as well. And we have certain parts of the presentation where we'll definitely answer questions. All right, so one of the things, of course, we're dealing with is individuals. And of course, we're dealing, especially when you look at the maxillary mandible, the TMJ, we're dealing with jaw joints, we're dealing with natural anatomical features, physiological limitations, oftentimes with patients as well. For example, I have one patient in the presentation today, we're going to talk about he's had dentures for over 60 years. So I'm sure his TMJ looks very different than a healthy dentate individual who has full function as well. Another issue, of course, we're looking at the muscular system and what muscles affect denture stability or even just occlusal stability in general. We're looking at, of course, our masticatory muscles. We're looking at muscles of facial expressions as well and how they affect things. I, especially as a denturist, I deal with, of course, the orbiculars auras all the time dislodgement of dentures upon mouth opening. We're dealing, of course, with the tongue, the sublingual area as well, and what gives us stability and instability of a denture. All right, next slide. Okay, now I'm sure all you can, you can relate. A patient comes into our office and the patient has, say, dentures. Upper and lower dentures has been wearing the same dentures for about 20 or 30 years. And we're looking at the dentures and, and the patient is very overclosed. Uh, the dentition is very worn as well. And so, of course, now we're starting to, to diagnose. We're trying to create a treatment plan. And we think, we're saying, well, I think this and this is happening. Uh, I see severe maybe jaw bone atrophy or you, you see mobile tissues as well and mobile ridge. And so you say, okay, well, I look at this patient. So I assume that he or she will is able to eat well, or they have certain specific limitations. Sometimes, yes, we see maybe the, the muscles. We look at the masseter. Some people have, you know, they have parafunctional habits. They're, they're clenchers, they're grinders. So we, 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 we look at different things to kind of somehow diagnose as well. Or other patients we have as well, and you can see them. And, you know, again, things are worn and you think they can't eat very well probably on a liquid diet, or even worst case scenario, they're not able to masticate their food at all. So they're eating it whole or large chunks as well, which of course, as we know, is very unhealthy for a patient. So let's look at some of the devices that have been developed over time as well here. Uh, the, the dynamo meter, and again, this is a device, I assume to, to record or to measure 
bite forces. Uh, this interesting device is called the strained gauges. Again, I've not experienced that one. I've worked with the T-scan a little bit as well. I think for us dentures, when we're dealing with denture occlusion or potential partial dentures as well with natural dentition, it's a neat device. I think it's great definitely when, when dentists deal with implant restorations and also with equilibration and full mouth re uh, restorations as well. Great device definitely need to have in an office but to me as a dentist I, I would like something that is almost in some ways a bit more maybe less specific but more gives me more of a general recording of occlusal forces of, of you know bite applications as well and that's why I really thought this innobite when I saw the initial presentation it really caused it caused some curiosity because I was like wow Unless I stick my finger in a patient's mouth and the patient bites on my fingers, my index fingers, I know the patient has a lot of bite force, it hurts. And some patients don't have a lot of bite force. There's really no way for me to measure. And I love the idea of having something that, that is truly patient-centered, patient-centric and derived. And the patient shows me, and I can see each patient individually where he or she is at as well. So. The neat thing, and, and Frederick can tell you a bit about, about this one as well. So it's a, a patented device, first one on the market to, to truly record the bite force. And even better, it's actually designed and I understand made in Canada as well. So pretty exciting. So, so how this bite force device works on so the InnoBite, there's the silicone bite fork. You can see it right there. It's about five millimeters thick and it contains sensors as well. So basically this gets introduced in the patient's mouth and you're gonna see a video very shortly. And it doesn't take a lot of time actually to accomplish this measurement. And the neat thing is it is repeatable and I love that idea. And of course, getting this device, one of the things I did right away was test it on myself and team members as well. And it's, it's pretty exciting actually being able to do this multiple times and, and is it repeatable? And here's a brief video. All right, so, and again, why measuring bite foot? Why is that important? Oh, sorry, uh, let's go back. To me, I like to establish a baseline. So when I have a patient in, for example, patient came in today, she's my age, so 55. She uh, doesn't have any lower posterior teeth. She has basically six anterior teeth, uh, one premolar on each side, and then she's missing three posterior teeth in the mandible on each side. So that's six. On the upper, she has crown, like crowned restorations. So PFM, porcelain fused metal crowns. Um, those crowns, anterior crowns have worn down the lower anterior teeth as well. So she's overclosed. She has no posterior teeth. So she has seen bite collapse as well. I placed the InnoBite and as she closed today, she registered 244 Newtons. Now, I say to her, well, I measure a thousand newtons, right? Which is kind of on the higher spectrum as well, which to me, I would say, hey, I'll, I'll delete one zero, one deci decimal there. And guess what? I'll call that about a hundred percent. So if I have a hundred percent biting force and she has 24% right now, 24.4, she's already severely limited in her bite force. So therefore I can now design a treatment plan and she's gonna have all the teeth removed. She's gonna need dentures. Now with dentures, we know there's a significant decrease in bite force. And I said to our listener at age 20, you probably had hundred percent bite force. You know, you had all your natural dentition, you could eat anything, apples, 
carrots, corn on the cob, nuts, and everything else. Now you're down to 24%. And when you get dentures, you usually lose about 80 to 90% of your initial bite force. So just think, what where you at right now at 24%, you may be going down to 10% at the end. So now she's already, she understands that. And we've talked about lower implants and she's willing to have precision dentures made and she's going to get at least two lower implants. And ultimately, it actually helps me to have less disappointed patients because I can show them now that, hey, this is where you're at. And you know, ultimately, this is your challenge. It's not my challenge. My job is to make the best dentures I can. But if you're already coming with all these limitations, it makes treatment planning a lot easier for me. And you turn it over to the patient and really say, this is your challenge. I'm here to help you. What can you do? So again, it, it is really a great tool. It allows me again to design treatment plans as well. And in BC, of course, we can't do any fixed restorations on implants. So yes, I work with dentists. We do removable. If somebody wants fixed, obviously refer them back to a dentist who will then, of course, look after that treatment modality as well. But again, it's a great way of explaining. And as you'll see in the presentation later, I actually have some patients with implants and using the bite fork, uh, force is fascinating as well. All right, so again, to take a measurement, it is very straightforward. And I have my bite force right here on the counter. If we have some time left, I may take my own. So basically we actually place a plastic sleeve. We bring it against the upper teeth as well. There's actually an arterial ledge there. And the patients, and it's self-seating in a sense. We have these posterior guides and, and the bite fork on the, the inner bite is very soft as well. So basically patient occludes, it'll self-seat and then have the patient occlude. We usually do it three times. The first time the patient just kind of gets used to the device. The second time they get much more comfortable. Sometimes you already get the maximum, but I would say at the, at the third time, I just say, hey, now just, you know what it feels like? Go ahead and try to destroy this. Just bite as hard as you can on your back teeth if you have them or just in general, close on your back posterior denture teeth as well. All right, and this is great. So, and this is actually neat. I have also have this laminated page. I presented to my patients office saying, hey, where, where do you think you're at? What do you think your, your biting force lies? Are you, you know, you can eat anything. Are you in the, the high range where you're at? And a lot of patients are pretty good. They'll say, okay, I'm in about the green or maybe the yellow level as well. But it's neat. So once you've done the, the InnoBite registration, and then you can show them this form. And then I say, okay, well, let's, let's look, look at where you're at right now. So again, I'm in the blue range, 1,000 plus. Normal is between 650 and 1,000. Um, then we're moving into the 4 to 650 Newton range, again, having some deficit. And you'll be amazed how many patients actually score oftentimes in the zero, the zero to 100 or 100 to 200. In all honesty, a lot of the denture patients that I, I deal with initially, they definitely struggle. Uh, the lowest reading I've had, and that's featured in this presentation, is 70 newtons as well or 73, which happened just last week. And that's a real challenge because now you're saying, okay, well, really, how well can you eat? And then the, because the patient has nothing to compare it to, you know, it's hard for them to kind of say, well, I think I, I should be eating better. But of course, now their diet of probably consists of soft items, very limited foods they can eat as well, probably, you know, just cooked vegetables, very soft things, not the healthiest, of course. Well, this is also a great form to show to the individual saying, hey, you're between 400 to 650, you have a light deficit as well. So what are options? And if you look down on the bottom, the options most of the time are, of course, implants, right? This is the best way of stabilizing your dentures to increase your bite force. Absolutely. Definitely new dentures, of course, even things like relining dentures or what's the best fitting if we look at a full prosthetic or if you're looking at or partial prosthetics, what's the best we can accomplish to? Important to understand that as well. All right, now purchasing the InnoBite, I'll turn this slide over to Fred and he'll fill you in a bit. Thank you so much, Marcus. So the big question obviously is, how do you purchase the InnoBite? First of all, we work with several partners. Um, we work with distributors such as SwissNF, Henry Schein, Zahn, Patterson. 
Um, so if ever you'd be interested in purchasing one and incorporating the Innobite in your practice, let us know, we'll work with you. Now, we sell the clinical package, which is on the left here, for $4,995. Uh, we also offer the financing option, which comes, which comes down to about $99 a month. Now, with this initial package, you have everything you need to take a first measurement the first day you receive it. And, and Marcus can, can attest to that. Um, what you need to keep in mind is that these mouthpieces have a life. So because every patient is trying to destroy them, as Marcus said before, every day, all day long, after a thousand measurements, we're gonna have to replace it. Now, what's great with the device is that the device will let you know, starting at 900 measurements, that you need to think about replacing the device. So you can give us a call and we can arrange for a replacement. That will be $965. And we sell um, the, the disposable bags that goes on top of the mouthpiece when you take a measurement for in boxes of 100 bags for $49.95. So that comes down to only $1.50 per measurement. And that's a really low cost. That's even less than the impression material. And then especially when you think we can sell an implant and convert the patient to the best treatment plan supported on implants, it's really worth it. Now, if you are interested as well, we currently have a special promotion concerning the product. Uh, if you'd like to purchase, this, purchase it sorry, before the end of this month, we will include a free mouthpiece replacement. So you're gonna get the initial package, you, you can take 1000 measurements, and when you're gonna get to the end of it, we'll ship you another mouthpiece for free. So that is concluding my uh, little intervention here, Marcus. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And yes, that's definitely a deal. That's actually why I went for it too. I said, hey, a thousand measurements, this is great. But if I get another replacement mouthpiece, I'll be good for another, who knows how long, right? Now, it's interesting to remember though, because if you do two or three measurements on the same patient, of course, you can't do a thousand patients. Maybe you'll do 300 patients, but still, I don't know how many patients you see a day, but it's going to be probably two years for me, right? the way I use this, but I'm using it more and more now as well. So that's actually pretty exciting, right? And at, you know, at a measurement of a dollar fifty every time you do one, I mean, that's, that's actually a fantastic tool because what else do you have to do? If you have to send somebody in to get maybe the jaw x-ray, TMJ issues and everything else. I mean, this is so easy to do. It's in your office and, you know, I present the patient, you can show the display as well. Fantastic. Now, a couple of things I would recommend, though, if it's possible in the future, maybe have a date and time showing on that little screen. That would be great, right? And maybe even in the future, if it's, I don't know, Bluetooth or something, then you can send your values, you know, to, to your computer at the office, too. So it's just something fresh down the road as you're improving <laughs> it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I will keep that in mind. You know, I'll give you lots of feedback. Okay. Questions and answers. Anybody have any questions you'd like to ask? So if anyone has any questions, there's there's two different options you can you can ask them. You can either write them in the chat at this moment, or uh, you can write them in the Q and A, or you can raise your hand and we can take a few questions now. Now before we do that, uh, you can see on your screen the first poll. So uh, Marion, I'll let you take over for the poll question. Sounds good. We're just going to give about 10, 15 seconds for everyone to answer, and then we'll share the results. Very good. So we, we see a lot of people are answering. The way you can answer the poll question is you just select your answer and you submit that. All right, we got about half of the people that completed the poll. So we're going to give about 10 more seconds for everyone. Okay. So yeah, we're still getting some people answering the poll. Bear with us for a few more seconds here, please. Okay, I think we can uh, we can move ahead. Okay, so yeah, uh, please, Mary. We'll go yeah. ahead. Share. Yep, we'll go ahead and share the results just to kind of get an idea of what everyone's thinking about this. Mm -hmm. so, so very interesting. Uh, so we were asking how many patients per month are refusing implant treatment that uh, the dentists are proposing. 
37% are seeing between one and five patients, 18%, six to 10, and 30%, uh, more than 10 patients a month. So uh, that is very interesting. Yeah, great. Thank you for, thank you for voting. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much. And you know, as a dentist, I, I, uh, I guess it's part, of, of course, as of our understanding and explaining treatments to patients that we always recommend implants or majority of times as the best solution to stabilize dentures. And unfortunately, the majority of patients always decline that. So you know, this is this is great a reality. Hey, let's let's show where you're at and let us help you. Okay, what's happening? I'm frozen. Marian, maybe I think we got to end the, the poll. Uh, Marcus, you should be able to keep going now. No problem. That sounds good. Let me see here. Yep, I did end the poll. That was all set. That was ended. Okay. All right. I'll just maybe do it. There we go. Okay. All now, right. Now, another great option as well. Now, Dentures in BC, yes, we're starting to offer night guards, mouth guards as well. And hey, what a great tool again. If you can show a patient, hey, you. Your clencher, we can see wearing your teeth and your inner bite, you're at a thousand or whatever, 1100 newtons, you need a night guard, right? And again, easy to show the patient. And if you don't do it, look what happens to your teeth, TMJ issues you're running into as well, right? So again, very easy to, to just place a, take a recording and then show the patient and make it their responsibility. Hey, you got to look after your teeth. Hopefully you don't want dentures in 10, 20 years because your teeth are worn out. So, or very expensive full mouth reconstruction, right? So again, that's something easy to, to share. All right, so now this is the my fun part, okay? I've spent a lot of time getting pictures ready for you as well, because I wanna show you some real patients, some cases that I've been working on the last few months and use the endobite as well. So I got it in April of 2021. And of course, as you can tell here, this is myself, I'm at 1,008. This is uh, some, some of my team members as well. One scored 1167, another one 932, and another one actually just did yesterday. Uh, 1078 is actually the, the last one. I, I tested that individual a little while ago. He was actually at the 932. So it's interesting as he's getting more comfortable being able to actually cl close down. So of course, it's a fun toy, right? In many ways, hey, see where you're at and see if you can beat me in a sense, right? Make it fun. All right, so let's take a look at some patients here and let's take a look at mix and match a little bit, okay? And uh, so I put some values up here. Now, again, this has been scored by patients. So one patient within this range. So look at these six different pictures you have here. A patient scored 1025. Another patient scored 231 Newtons. Another one at 672. And one patient among these ones here scored 73 Newtons, right? So I'll go through multiple patients that I have and I'll show you again measurements I took and kind of how it applied. And sometimes I got really surprised actually, the result. Okay, so... Patient BR here, initials. So this gentleman came to see us a few months ago. He has a complete upper denture, partial lower. So if you look at the middle picture, you see this individual kind of, you can see how the teeth are worn down, right? So shifting the mandible, protrusive all the time, extreme wear pattern, the whole upper denture just rotates. It's been flipping, it's been moving a lot. Uh, you can even see Low anterior teeth here. The lateral is actually just failing. You can see quite a bit of you know, inflammation here, the lower ridge. So anyways, the laterals were removed. He already had these centrals, right? These funky denture teeth as well. And so had one lateral removed. Actually, this is still the central. So you can see even anterior teeth have flared. And then at the end, the patient was left with the two canines standing and a gold crown as well. So this is where he came to see me. And I started taking impressions, taking measurements, working with referring dentist here. So you see my preliminary impression, my final impression. And again, I do do uh, BPS precision dentures and I follow Dr. Abe suction denture design. So the blue is actually a functional post dam, which is fantastic. You do it at the very end when you do a final impression and it increases suction fit tremendously. And lower final impression here, this is actually two-step alginate with some Zermac alginate as well. Came out really well, that's the final impression. And this is the lower 
the new model, the master model, and actually just placed the lower partial on just to show, right? So again, created a new partial, oops, there's the gentleman, look at him, overclosed on the left side, right? So when he closed down, you can see, so you have about at least eight millimeters freeway. And when he smiled, it didn't show any teeth at all. And in the center, you see the new maxillary denture and the lower partial together. Now this is fascinating. So when he came in and I inserted this last week and I hadn't done actually innobite measurements on him at all. When I inserted it and I placed the innobite and I took a bite, he was at 231 newtons. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. So anyways, I had him do it multiple times and he said, yep, that's, that's as hard as I can bite on my posterior teeth now. But then I placed the innobite. I said, well, with the old denture, I said, well, let's see where you're at. And he scored 73 newtons with his old dentures, complete upper partial lower. And I asked him, well, this is hard, as hard as you can bite. He says, yes, I'm biting so hard that my denture is hurting me. It's pushing under my upper lip, right? So again, just think, he's been struggling with these dentures for probably X many, many years. And you know, he now is in the process of moving, sold his house, he had some money and really felt the need to restore them and replace them as well. So anyways, he was supposed to come in this week. He called actually yesterday, it was great. And he said, hey, everything is going great. And the fascinating thing will be once he comes in, in the next month or so, I love to check the innobite again because I've done it with multiple patients. And I've seen some patients where I inserted something at 300 newtons and two weeks later, they were already at 500 newtons. So again, becoming much more comfortable with their prosthesis. And especially when, as you know, we restore somebody vertically as well. I mean, that is a huge change. You know, the mandible retreats most of the time, a, a very different just jaw alignment, the whole occlusal forces that are applied as well and, and chewing functions. So, so again, his, his increase actually, when you, look, when you look at 73 to 231, well, that's not a huge increase, but if you actually look at it from a percentage point, he actually increased 216%. And that was within probably 10 minutes, right? With the new restorations. And of course, with the old partials as partial and denture too. So, all right, now this is fascinating. Okay, this patient came to see me She's worn the same partial denture for the past 30 years, right? And of course, it's nice the patients had a partial, but we know that partials wear out as well. Now you can see she's quite, she's quite the bruxer. So just looking at her natural dentition she has in the maxilla, she has a crown, a lateral, like a one, two. You're looking at posterior crowns and she has some lower crowns as well. And Everything is really worn down. So, you know, it's got a very deep bite, a lot of restorations, some composite restoration as well. Biggest challenge, of course, because she's had a partial, the lower left distal extensions and her actually upper posterior teeth have severely over uh, She was also going to have a tooth extracted here. Uh, the four seven would be taken out too. And you can see in the bottom slide, the severely worn partial. My goodness, now fascinating. What values? What do you think I scored with her? So let's just take a look, okay? So this is a partial. She actually had some, some uh, precision attachments, actually keyways in her lower crowns that actually had to be replaced as well. So this is your existing partial, final impressions, the partial that was fabricated, and we're adding five posterior teeth. And it's also tough too, because the upper crowns had the dentures actually reduced them, ground them down. So then of course they became very flat and she actually has a posterior crossbite on the bottom left side. But this is amazing. I placed the innobite before the partial was placed. Okay, so this is the same appointment. You can actually see the percentage, 79% of battery. So it was the same time. She scored 611 Newtons. And then she occluded with the partial in place and wow, over a thousand 25 newtons, right? Like to me, again, that's like my value or, or fully dentate individuals. So to me, it's a great way of just showing, showing the patient saying, hey, if you don't have a partial and I know it's hard to get used to it, but look, a partial will provide posterior teeth and posterior teeth, of course, as we all know, those are chewing teeth, right? How much function, like the, we know the first molars, 
receive about 60% of, of master tachyarrhea function in, in the natural dentition. So we want to restore them again. And oftentimes I'll see the patients, yes, maybe you've had a partial in the past, you can't get used to it. Well, then look if possible to get some posterior implants in the mandible as well. Again, fascinating case to me, at least. I love those things as well. Now, this is great. Now, how about it? somebody comes in, this gentleman is in his 80s and he needs immediate dentures, right? And of course you look at the dentition, it's failing, you know, has severe periodontal disease. You know, we have, have of course, jawbone atrophy as well, mobile teeth. So with this gentleman, and, and I like to tinker with as well. So I did a Facebook recording. I actually did multiple bites, centric, protrusive laterals because I wanted to program my, my articulator, my Stratus 300. That was actually pretty cool. So anyways, made him his immediate dentures. And he said to me, his wife is jealous because we gave him an A2 shade denture teeth. And he came in and his initial recording was 487 newtons with his natural dentition. Now, if you go back to the previous slide, you can't see it too well, but he had some premolars on the bottom right side, also on the bottom left. Uh, over wrapped the posterior tooth as well, molar as well. So he didn't really have a whole lot of posterior teeth or very functioning posterior teeth that worked, but he still had a pretty decent value, right? So mid, mid picture here in the middle, you can see him with his dentition, failing dentition, new dentition he's very pleased with, but he has a huge decrease, right? So he went from 487 newtons to 156. So like two thirds decrease in biting force. Now this value is interesting, 251. So this is after I've seen him for a while. I actually end up placing some tissue conditionings, stabilize the dentures again. And this measurement actually was just from a couple of weeks ago when I saw him last time. So yes, dentures have severe limitations, but on the other hand, we can also ensure that dentures fit well. And by doing so, we can create better fitting dentures, patients are happier. So it's definitely worthwhile to put the effort in. Now, this is, this is an interesting patient here as well. Again, upper anterior bridge was failing. You can tell there's quite a bit of, you know, actually infection going on here. We have dental decay, so maxillary teeth were removed and he waited for initial healing and had a denture made. So this is his denture right there, upper right hand corner. And, Again, he had it for about a year now. It's time for the permanent relines. So you can see on the left side, this is my reline impression. I now spend a lot of time on my relines. So I do a border molding. Well, first of all, I try to find out if the dentures are all extended. I reduce them. Uh, border molding, uh, final tissue impressions here. And I actually have a tissue stop. And it's always interesting. I oftentimes see patients push through in the anterior as well. So what does that really mean? As the patient occludes, they apply some pressure and denture naturally will over time. And, and you do get some anterior bone loss as well. The denture moves upward and you oftentimes will see more material on the posterior, but this is what's needed to stabilize the denture. And this, this is a heat processed denture as well. And the value, and this is the same appointment. He came in, I took a measurement in about 507 Newtons. And as soon as I took my arena under pressures, I measured it again. and Wow, what an increase, right? 33%. So yes, we can create better dentures, patients are happier, and a better fit will translate into a greater chewing function and more patient satisfaction as well. And again, this is great to show to the patient saying, hey, look, this is where you're at. Now this patient, I saw him two weeks ago. So he has a complete upper denture, which I made for him several years ago. And now he, he's going to lose his lower teeth, right? Again, you see decay here, you see this interesting restoration, huge crown, very discolored. I don't know if it's a mostly amalgam or something. He also has a PFM crown there. And this is, this is interesting. Again, he comes in, he's already at 326 newtons. So what does that mean again? I'm like, well, it'll be fascinating to see when you restore your your mandible as well as we restore your, your mouth to create dentures if we can, you know, how much of a, a loss it will be, or perhaps it may even be an improvement. But again, this is a tool, right? So I can now say to the patient, this is your value. You score very low already. We recommend you look at implants. You're not starting at a thousand. You're already starting at, you know, since 32.6%. So you are actually quite severely limited already. 
in your function. And again, you already seen this page, but I just wanted to add it again. Again, let's look at values. So where are these patients fitting in then? So some of the patients are, you know, okay, 300 or already less. The patient you saw before, he was at 73. He was critically deficient. And, you know, if patients come and they struggle, and if we can show we can provide value, we can help you, and they embrace the treatment plan, you know, we see much better results of patient acceptance of what, how we can help patients. Again, if you're at 73, it would be fascinating to really observe what the patient is able to eat, if the patient can even keep track, hey, I'm eating this. And we would have in the range, most patients so far that you've seen, I mean, there's some in the 500, 600, 1,000 as well, but the majority of patients will be in this, this you know, deficient area of, of masticatory function, very limited as well. Now we do have another question and I'll have Marianne just look after that as well. Thank you, Marcus, for these uh, clinical cases. I just find them all fascinating, really, with the results in the pictures. Great. Um, so here's the second poll question for everyone. Uh, question is, do you think incorporating bite force measurement would be beneficial to your practice? So we'll give everyone uh, about 15 seconds to answer, and we'll look at the results. Okay, we're just looking at a few more seconds for everyone to answer. There's there's a lot of people answering. Sorry, it's just going to take a few more seconds here. It's all good. Take your time. <clears throat> okay, Marianne, I think we're going to be good. So Marcus, great news. 78% uh, are thinking that yes, measuring bite force can, can make a big difference in your practice. So that's great mm -hmm. news. Well, exciting, right? And it's one of those things you just have to try it out and, and observe, right? And once that's why I find once I got going, I'm like, hey, I want to try it on this patient. And how about that patient as well? And where are they at, you know? And uh, I mean, I have a fascinating implant case I want to show later, which, which should be towards the end, right? And I don't know, some things will really surprise you, right? And, uh, you know, instead of estimating or, or guessing or saying, hey, I would assume that this will be the best result. Sometimes it could actually be shocking too, if you say, well, I've always done it this way, but maybe this is not the best solution for this particular patient as well, right? Absolutely. Cool. I think Absolutely. we're good to, are we good to go? Yes, I can see yes. something. Okay, perfect. Now here, this is my surprising results, right? Because I always fascinated now, and uh, you know, like I have this gentleman. Oh, there we go. You know, I've had I've seen this patient for many years now, right? And uh, you know, he, he's great. You know, friendly. He's like in his eighties now. He just turned eighty as well. Has been a denture wearer for over sixty years. Okay, so he got his dentures when he was nineteen or twenty, and he started seeing me about uh, ten years ago, right? He had moved out this area, started coming to my clinic, and. I made him a set of dentures before this set and guaranteed every two years he would come in and the anterior teeth had shipped. So we start replacing teeth for him. And, and I was wondering why is it, was it denture teeth? And then I, these dentures I made these four years ago. And so I used Fonaris teeth. I was like, okay, I'll get the hardest I can find. And we've been very careful at, you know, crucial adjustments and everything else. But again, every so often, but it hasn't happened a whole lot with these dentures, but he comes in and he chips his anterior teeth, right? So anyways, so we repaired his denture and then he said, well, hey, I'm eligible. Let's me as well, let's get some relines, right? So I relined his upper lower denture here. And again, you know, we, this is part of our process. We actually pour up the denture in the flask here and then we reline them as well. So, and you can see even his mandible, I mean, it has severe anterior bone loss, you know, a decent ridge in the posterior, quite a slope, but he's got a very nice maxilla, right? So anyways, so, so here you can see a close-up picture of his anterior teeth and you can tell, yes, over time, he wears them in, right? He just really goes to town. But what was fascinating to me, he scored 690 newtons. 
So of all my denture patients, even patients, some patients with implants, he's really the highest scoring patient I've had. And it makes sense to me now, right? He wears his teeth out every five, six years. So it's not something that I have to feel bad about because now I can say to the patient, listen, you have a really, have a heavy bite, which is wonderful. Wear out your dentures. That means you're able to eat much better, but this is a great tool. So it's not something to do with the denture teeth I'm using, uh, denture acrylic I'm using as well, but this is you and this is wonderful. Look at the, it's like good news, right? You have this, this ability to chew extremely well. Great, we'll work with you. And we'll replace those denture teeth as need be and we'll make your dentures. Thank goodness he hasn't broken the dentures, right? We, we use Ivo cap, right? So it's definitely a hard acrylic. So it's been very positive for him as well, but he's ready probably in two years. But again, we just relent the dentures and he'll probably get a few more years out of these ones here, right? But uh, it's fascinating. All right, now this lady here, I've again treated her over the years. So this is a second set of dentures used for Nara's teeth on her as well. So she has this lower bar, right? And she has four locator attachments to it as well. And she's doing pretty good. She has some plaque. She, uh, I guess her oral saliva contains a lot more minerals as well. So she goes in for cleaning every three months, six months or something. So she's very good at maintaining things. And uh, I, I put locator clear inserts recently and they, you know, slap, snap in nicely and everything else. So where do you think she should be at? So she's got a good maxilla. She's got a lower denture with four implants. And so, okay, so she should probably be about 800 to a thousand, right? And I asked her, well, hey, how, how are you doing with eating? She said, well, yeah, I can eat anything. I can eat an apple. I can eat corn on the cob, you know, really happy with my teeth and everything else. And so I, I put the InnoBite in and I, I, you know, we did the test three times and I said, this is as hard as you can bite. And she said, yep, this is the hardest. And look, she scored 390 newtons with an implant bar, right? Now it's not a fixed lower restoration. It's removable as you've seen it. But it's kind of shocking too, but in, in her eyes or the way it works for her, she's happy. She can eat what she wants to be able to eat. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that she may be eating very fast, but it works for her, right? So again, be aware of that. Sometimes you'll have those surprises. All right, now this is fascinating too. This patient came to see me. She's 41 years old. Now she lost her, her molars, her first molars many years ago. So just the lower ones as well, right? But very nice, beautiful dentition, actually. If I look at those teeth, I mean, she has, doesn't really have any fillings and everything else. You know, nice dental shade and everything. And, you know, I've taken impressions. So we're actually going to make a partial just to replace those two molars. And boom, she scored 374 newtons, which is, to be honest, shocking to me, right? But then again, when you think about it, okay, so those second molars, they've all now tilted mesially as well. They're tipped not the greatest chewing tooth. And again, if you look at the, the first molars as being your main chewing tooth, now you have overwrapped it molars on the upper. They don't actually touch lower teeth. She also has a crossbite bottom left side as well. So again, fascinating. So it'd be really interesting to see when I actually place the partial and how she will do that. And I would assume we'll see, I will see a significant increase as well. And wow, this is it already. <laughs> so this is my contact information. If you have questions, if you want to send me an email, I'm happy to, to you know, respond to you as well. I'm also on Facebook too. And just like probably most of you, I'm very busy right now. So happy to be in touch. I know I've had a few people contact me about the InnoBite. And yes, it's a financial investment. But in all honesty, it's another tool for me now to treatment plan. What I love about it, it's repeatable, and I can finally have a measurable value, something that is very patient-specific, you know, again, achieved or, or completed by the patient that I can say now, hey, this is where you're at, this I would recommend, and it's, it's just, to me, it's a very nice tool to have, and it takes the pressure off me as well to saying, oh, yeah, my dentures don't work so good, but if I can also say, hey, this is where you're at before, and now you have dentures, Let's work on making them fit well. Let's reline them on a regular basis. And if you're not happy, let's get you some implants and you'll be much happier, right? So hopefully that was enlightening. I could have included a few more slides, but I hopefully enjoyed them because to me, I love photography and I, I take tons of photos all the time, right? Because to me, it's, it's record keeping. That's also something for me to look at because 
I enjoy it. <laughs>